The mini PC market has been booming in recent years, growing drastically in CPU and iGPU performance, and going all in on AI. But it can't go on like this. Unfortunately, Apple just dropped a $599 bomb that's raised the performance bar beyond the reach of the current batch of AMD and Intel-based machines, and the public doesn't seem to give a shit about AI, at least not enough to want to pay for it. If the good times are going to keep rolling for this niche of super small form factor PCs, things are going to have to change. I have to say, I'm kinda glad the new B-Link SCR8 exists right now. The latest M4 Mac Mini has torpedoed the entire premium mini PC market, making it hard to justify spending over $600 on anything with a Ryzen or Core Ultra CPU. Arguably, this means the only winnable battleground for mini PCs at the end of 2024 is going to be people who can't afford a Mac Mini. The new SCR8 starts at just £382 or 479 US dollars, with a base spec of 24 gigs of DDR5 RAM and a 1TB Gen 4 NVMe SSD. At that price point, you'd normally expect to find an older generation chip, and while this isn't exactly cutting edge, it is still technically a new CPU. The SCR8 features a Ryzen 7 8745HS essentially an 8845HS without the extra NPU cores, and I think a lot of people would agree that this is a pretty safe corner to cut. It means a lower price point without sacrificing CPU or GPU performance, and the only thing you lose is the already ill-defined benefits of a few dedicated AI cores. With that in mind, this 8-core Zen 4 APU is a pretty close match to the old Ryzen 7 7840HS, previously seen in the SCR7 and well known for being a powerhouse of a chip. It's not as powerful as the new Ryzen AI 9 HX370 or the Core Ultra 9 185H, but as part of a package that comes fully loaded with 50% more RAM and four times the storage capacity of the base M4 Mac Mini for under £400, it actually looks like great value. As with most mini PCs, the SCR8 still holds some bragging rights over the Apple ecosystem. As well as a sensibly located power switch, the exterior has a range of what the Cupertino folks would probably call legacy I.O., like DisplayPort 1.4 and four total USB Type-A ports, two old-school USB 2s and two 3.2s. There's also an HDMI 2.1 port, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, a single USB 4 Type-C port, and a USB 3.2 Type-C up front. Just the one USB 4 port is a bit disappointing, but at least mini PCs can plug something interesting into it. Apple Silicon Macs don't support eGPUs for gaming, so if their limited selection of native games wasn't already enough to persuade you that Macs still aren't for gaming, I think that's another nail in the coffin. On the inside, we have the other area mini PCs often excel in, upgradability. Sure, it's not as much as you'd like, and some performance is inevitably lost by maintaining socketed RAM rather than soldered LPDDR5 chips, but if the stock 24 or 32 gigabytes isn't enough for you at any point, you have the option to upgrade. Practically speaking, up to 96 gigabytes at the moment, though according to B-Link, the system can theoretically support a maximum of 256 gigabytes. There's also the feature you won't find on the Mac Mini. If you look under this heatsink, it has what they call a spare M.2 slot, made for installing a second SSD, all by yourself. No soldering iron required. Somebody show this to Tim Cook, it'll blow his fucking mind. When it comes to performance, my synthetic benchmark results so far are only really comparable to other mini PCs I've tested. We've already seen how the 8845HS and 7840HS perform, and there's not much in the way of surprises here. And I don't have a way of testing NPU performance to see if there's a major difference between the 8745 and 8845. 
I've yet to pick up a Mac Mini for testing, so I don't have any direct comparisons of my own. However, I've added Cinebench 24 to the test suite, as that's a pretty common benchmark to see on the Mac side of things. The multi-core score of 918 is about 50 to 70 points behind what I've seen other people reporting from the base model M4 Mac Mini, which is very good performance for the price. But the single core result of 101 is a whopping 70 points behind Dave2D's M4 test. The SCR8 is also using just short of 88 watts during the Cinebench run, whereas Jeff Geerling measured the Mac Mini as a mere 38 watts in the same test. For productivity, I've tested Blender's Classroom scene, and I can give you the context of how it compared to other mini PCs which lack GPU acceleration in this program, but that's one inherent benefit of the M4 chip that there's just no getting past. In Blender and several other applications, Apple chips can use GPU acceleration with their integrated graphics, whereas the AMD chips can't. The same holds true for video editing. If you're working with the AV1 codec, it can be a pleasure to work on files in DaVinci Resolve using the SCR8, whereas with H.265 or even H.264 files, you're really going to miss out on having any kind of hardware acceleration, while the M4 is apparently on par with some discrete GPUs in that area. So yeah, by mini PC standards, it's fine compared to other sub $500 machines, it's fine. But if you're after something this size for serious creative work, the Mac is in a different class. Well, that was depressing. Let's get on to some games. When it comes to gaming, the B-Link has some inherent advantages from the Windows platform, as well as access to external graphics if extra power is needed. For context, you can buy the new SCR8, a cheap Thunderbolt eGPU dock and power supply, and a 16GB RTX 4060 Ti, and still be paying less than the cost of a base model Mac Mini with a 1TB SSD upgrade. And that's not even a particularly good value graphics card. That being said, Apple has made some moves to optimise a couple of big name games for their ecosystem, and again, while I don't have a way of making a direct comparison, I can show you how well the SCR8 runs those same games without adding external graphics. It's a pretty polarising game that Apple have chosen to plant their M4 gaming flag with. I happen to quite like Death Stranding, but I also understand why people would be a bit put off by the unending cutscenes, opaque techno babble, and fancy dressing over what's basically a literal walking simulator. Still, I was impressed to see the Ryzen APU handle it like a champ. If a 30fps experience is tolerable to you, then full 1080p and maybe even some higher settings might be in order, but I decided to target 60fps. At the default quality setting, 1080p still requires FSR2 upscaling to hit a 60 average, and while it's pretty stable, there are occasional drops in more scripted moments of gameplay. I have a feeling that Apple head office has a resident gaming expert they turn to when they decided to focus on expanding their appeal to gamers, only this expert's in their mid-40s, and hasn't been paying attention to new releases since the PS1 days. So logically, after finding out what the Metal Gear Solid guy's been up to lately, they went to see what's new with that hot new horror franchise, Resident Evil. Am I describing myself here? Shut up. Actually, I think Resident Evil Village was the first AAA game that Apple announced as being compatible with their new architecture, and I'm sure it runs great on the M4 devices, but it's no slouch on the Ryzen APU either. At 1080p balanced, it can run at a very decent 62fps average, with 1% lows in the high 40s. That might normally warrant turning on upscaling, except this is only FSR 1, so depending on your tolerance for blurry messes, you might want to think twice about that. Curiously, 2022's Game of the Year, and somehow possibly 2024's Game of the Year too, hasn't had an official Mac port as yet, so Elden Ring only runs through Windows translation via crossover, which is not free either in terms of cost or performance. 
The SCR8, meanwhile, proves itself to be quite capable here. In my test, I saw an average of nearly 45 FPS at 1080p medium, with frame rates that were mostly stable but occasionally punctuated by the odd stutter. Another one that currently has to run through crossover on a Mac is Cyberpunk 2077. I have my own personal preferences for running this game, and that means 1080p medium or above without FSR 2 or 3, and at those settings the Ryzen can only just pull off a 30fps average. I noticed ETA Primes tested this one on the M4 Mac Mini at 1080 low without FSR and reported about 42fps, so I went back and retested at those same settings. And while I can't guarantee my benchmark run covers the same ground as his, I saw nearly 38 FPS with lows still in the 20s. Once again, my point of reference in Spider-Man Remastered was ETA Prime's Mac Mini review, but I couldn't quite match settings with him. His result of 88 FPS was achieved with IGTI upscaling enabled, but he didn't say how much, so I had to run my test a few times at different levels of upscaling to see which came closest. Without upscaling, I saw 41 FPS at 1080p medium. Adding IGT quality sends the frame rate rocketing up to 67, and that's probably about as far as I'd go. Each more aggressive level of upscaling reduces image quality by levels which, in my opinion, aren't really acceptable, and for only pitiful increases in average FPS. The 1% lows remain pretty bad at every level of IGT, and even at IGT performance, I'm still a long way from ETA Prime's results from the Mac. Finally, a game you definitely shouldn't play on a Mac anyway. CS2 has no official Mac port yet, and playing through crossover apparently introduces latency and causes issues with high polling rate mice. The SCR8, meanwhile, is a perfectly adequate esports machine, and while the Ryzen APU doesn't give the smoothest frame times, it does give an average of about 120 FPS at 1080p low. In the UK, the base entry-level price of the B-Link SCR8 is about 35% lower than the cheapest M4 Mac Mini. Factor in the cost of upgrading storage and RAM to match, and the Apple rises to a frankly ridiculous £1,200, though how realistic that is as a point of comparison is debatable. I expect many people looking at the cheapest M4 Mini are just planning to deal with the limited RAM and tiny SSD. At base model prices, the B-Link is still the more sensible choice for many applications, and it makes a lot of more expensive mini PCs look like poor value. The situation's a little less clear in the US. Right now, the B-Link's just 20% cheaper than the Mac, and that might make the M4 system worth the extra cost, depending on what you're planning on doing with it. However, if you're watching this in 2025, things might be radically different. Proposed new tariffs on Chinese manufactured goods could potentially affect the B-Link and not the Mac, which is manufactured in Malaysia. I don't think I really need to say that in a situation where the SCR8 costs the same as an M4 Mac Mini, or even more, it would be a much less appealing purchase. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.